Hi, this is Keith Miller, your instructor for EdTech 6436. I answer to Keith or Professor Miller, take your pick. In this initial mini-lecture, I'll be making some opening remarks about the flipped classroom, active learning, and teaching strategies, particularly online teaching strategies. These will all be themes throughout the semester. Notice that some of the students in this picture are sleeping, some are distracted, and some are talking. And also notice that the teacher and many of the students are looking in a book. This ancient picture shows nicely a form of education still popular in schools today, including universities. The teacher is, hopefully, the center of attention, and students are supposed to be passive consumers of the teacher's wisdom. A nickname for this model of learning is the sage on the stage. As this ancient picture nicely illustrates, this model has not changed much in centuries. Of course, if you have an extremely wise sage who has wonderful stage presence and a compelling story to tell, sage on the stage may be a pretty good pedagogical model. The popular online series of TED lectures shows off some great lecturers presenting some of their very best material. However, TED lectures are relatively short and often feature the world's greatest experts on a given topic. Few of us teachers can claim that we can be the world's greatest experts on anything, and certainly not on everything in a semester-long course. An elementary or high school teacher would have an impossible challenge to be a sufficiently wise sage to support the TED model throughout even one entire school day let alone an entire school year. Many educational theorists, practitioners, and even students have become disenchanted with classes based exclusively on the model called Sage on the Stage. Guide on the Side is a new slogan meant to compete with the Sage on the Stage model. In a 1993 paper, Allison King talks about students taking a more active role in learning. Simultaneously, the teacher de-emphasizes lecturing and emphasizes facilitating learning in other ways. In that same 1993 paper, King suggests three ways in which a teacher can become a facilitator. Promote active learning, guide peer discussions, encourage cooperative learning. Notice that in all three of these suggestions King is placing the emphasis on the students activities. The teacher helps organize and gives direction but the students are energetically engaged not merely passively soaking things up. When I think of a class that is exclusively lecture I visualize opening up a student's skull and pouring in information and data. An alternative mental model of teaching and learning is that teachers and students are together climbing a mountain of ignorance. This idea of active learning, students and teachers climbing together, wasn't exactly a brand new idea in 1993 when King wrote her article. Here's a quote from John Dewey published in 1915. The teacher and the book are no longer the only instructors. The hands, the eyes, the ears, in fact the whole body, become sources of information while teacher and textbook become respectively the starter and the tester. That sounds a lot like a teacher facilitating hand-on active learning to me. And if you back up to the ancient Greeks, you can see some similar ideas being espoused. For example, Aristotle said, for the things we have to learn before we can do them, we learn by doing them. Since people have been talking about active learning for thousands of years, it's not surprising that there are all sorts of different labels and styles given to education that encourages students to learn by doing and thinking 
rather than relying exclusively on teachers telling and students listening. Here is a partial list of different kinds of educational ideas, some of which you may have already heard about or tried. Experiential learning, action learning, adventure learning, free choice learning, cooperative learning, service learning, and inquiry-based learning. The teacher focus sage on the stage kind of learning also has its advocates and more phrases. So didactic learning, rote learning, direct instruction, and distar are, are all uh, polar opposites of the terms we saw on the last side and all emphasize more teacher control and at least a somewhat more passive role for the student. You may be surprised that I've gone through a dozen slides before even mentioning computer-mediated communication. Given the title of our course, that's at least a little strange. But I'd like to think there is a method to this madness. Many of the computer-oriented teaching techniques that we will explore in EdTech 6436 will be presented as support for some kind of active role for students. Even online mini-lectures like this one, which look and sound suspiciously like the pouring in sage on the stage model, are part of an overall design intended to give us more time to actively learn in the face-to-face -face portion of our classes. So, even though active learning is an ancient idea, the modern technologies now available to us are a way for us to imaginatively and effectively implement these ideas of student engagement. Please note that I am not making huge claims here about how online teaching techniques are going to revolutionize the classroom. For example, I don't think online teaching is going to make face-to-face -face teaching obsolete. I think that some lecturing in a class is a good idea as long as the lectures are short and surrounded by other activities. I want us to add many more effective teaching techniques into our toolkits for pedagogy, but that does not mean I want you to throw away the old tools. I do think these new teaching techniques are significant. They have permanently changed the way I teach, both in face-to-face -face classes and in online classes, and I want them to change the way you teach. But that's only going to happen as you become comfortable and skilled in these techniques through observation and experience. Only then can you make them your own, adapting them as you adopt them into your teaching practice. I haven't even mentioned flipping the classroom. What does flipping the classroom mean? Well, it means having students do something online before they come to class and then having a more active face-to-face -face session. We'll talk a lot more about that in the rest of this semester. That's it for this lecture. Thanks for listening. You'll see more of this during the semester as we start our way through our textbook. If you have questions or comments about this lecture or about anything else in our course, please feel free to email me at the address shown on this slide. I look forward to learning together with you in EdTech 6436. Let's start up that mountain of ignorance together. See you soon in class. Bye-bye. Goodbye.